So, since I made a review video of the Myrmidons, I want to show them in battle as well. And that is something I want to do with every video. To sort of, sort of talk about the units, its strengths and weaknesses, and then try to use that on the battlefield. So here I have Myrmidons. Uh, I have three Myrmidons. Now this isn't necessarily a combination that I would recommend. Because uh, bringing three... Of the same means that you won't get your diversity bonus of 30%. So let's see what we have here. I could I could bring a unit of Ionian Archers. I could bring a unit of Lytoplites. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring one unit of Light Hoplites together with the Myrmidons. Or what the hell. I'm going to, just going to go full retard and bring three Myrmidons. So since I'm going to be dropping shields with Miltiades. And since I want my Myrmidons to be offensive, I'm going to give them a Weaponsmith to increase melee attack and Armorsmith to increase armor. Having armor, always nice, it allows you to reduce base damage. Not AP damage, but it allows you to reduce base damage. So since my Miltiades is a tier 7 general, uh, I have infantry charge at 7, drop shields at 6 and fair at 3. So that means that I'll be able to damage units fairly well with my infantry charge. Then I will be able to route them, drop the shields to make my otherwise heavy Myrmidons faster, if I should so choose. So I think I should be able to get a game reasonably quickly, because I am bringing tier 2 units. Yeah, seems like this is going to be rather quick. Because since Arena, currently, at least for for uh, the Alpha Scrubs, since it lacks a replay system, uh, it's hard to make concise videos, because it means I have to record a lot of stuff and then be where the action happens. So it's much easier for me to... It's much e much easier for me at this point to just play play a game and talk about the unit as I'm playing the game. Now the downside to that is that I won't be able to guarantee, I can't guarantee that it's a good game. I can't guarantee that I'm able to put the, the units in the situations where they are good in. And I can't guarantee that I'll be able to, to um, showcase where the units have shortcomings. Hopefully, I'll be able to do that more when a replay system, when a replay system appears. But what I thought would be cool was to try use the units with different commanders, just to show you how much of a difference the commander, um, the commander makes, or how much of a difference the abilities of the commander changes the way you use your units because I'm not going to be using my Myrmidons the same way with Miltiades that I'm going to be using them with Leonidas or Alexander. Vastly different, uh, vastly different abilities on those generals and the abilities of the general together with the unit dictate the playstyle that you can use successfully with these different commanders. Now the Myrmidons, since they are a premium unit, I'm going to have plus 15 unit XP per unit each battle. That's not a lot. It does add up over the course of several battles, but it's, uh, for example, someone who has a thousand battles, and let's say he br brings at least two premium units each each time, that's going to be 30,000 XP extra, at least. So... And 1,000 battles, I know that sounds like a lot, but there are players that have more than 20,000 battles. So if they were farming with premium units, they would get 60,000 XP extra from those premium units. So um, for each battle, it, 30 XP isn't a lot, but it starts to add up once you go, once you go full retard and get a lot of games in. This is the Battle of Marathon, and Marathon is a decent map to showcase the... To showcase the abilities of the Myrmidons, actually, so that's good. Being heavy, I want to keep my Myrmidons out of forests. Forests are going to penalize the Myrmidons quite substantially. 
On the other hand, they will be more vulnerable to missiles out in the open. And that could be bad. On these low tiers, the missiles are usually fairly short range in the form of javelins, a few archers. Archers I'm not worried about, but javelins with Caesar could do a lot of damage. But looking at the enemy team though, there weren't that many skirmish commanders. So I'm going to take point here. I'm going to use my heavy infantry center. It seems like there aren't that many tier two, that many tier two armies in this uh, in this battle. Let's see. We have um, Scipio with his. Um, I guess these are Italian swords. Maybe some Italian swords here. Some more Italian swords. But uh, Germanicus could be a problem. But I will hopefully be able to war cry Germanicus. I mean, fear him, of course. Put the fear of Miltiades into him. Alright, so, if I use my drop shields ability, I'm going to have plus 30% speed, plus 30% acceleration. So let's just have a look at the difference between a unit with shields and a unit without shields. I'm going to drop shields on this unit, then these two units are going to raise a bit. You can see that the drop shields unit is outpacing the other unit significantly, running a lot faster. But it's going to be more vulnerable against missiles. Still, dropping shields is very nice. It's it's uh, best to do this on light units because then the speed increase becomes massive. Now, ideally, I want someone else to push ahead here. I would like my Italian swordsman, Germanicus, to push forward because... Since I don't have shields on my units, that could be a problem. And if I mouse over the forest here, it's going to tell me that my melee defense is down by 80%, my melee attack is down by 80%, my, uh, my, and my speed is down to 70%. So not down by 80%, but down by 20, down by 20, and down by 30. So essentially, by dropping my shields, I'm going to be... I'm going to be losing melee defense from the shield. I'm going to be use, uh, losing. I'm going to be gaining, regaining the speed um, that I lost in the forest. But still, I am going to be heavy in the forest. I am going to be slow. So staying in the open, hopefully with some with some skirmish port close by to ward off enemy to ward off enemy skirmishers would be very very nice. Let's see. Here we have some hoplites. They are also heavy in the forest, they don't do too well at all. Here we have some medium Italian swords. The Italian swords, not as penalized as the Hoplites. Seems like both players messed up their charges here. I could engage up here, but there are skirmishers, so the enemy has pretty good positioning up there, I'd say. Some skirmishers pushing up here. About to move into range of the Levy Slingers. The Levy Slingers will do well against the Levies. So now I'm just going to be patient. I see some enemy artillery here. And once these flanks are engaged, I'm going to start pushing the center reasonably hard. Now this unit here is, looks, like it, uh, looks like it's alone. But there is another unit coming in to support it. Now we have four units and five units in the center. So this looks like something that I might want to start engaging. So I'm going to be sending in my non-commander units. I'm going to charge these units with my heavy infantry. The heavy infantry charge knocks down multiple units. Then I'm going to be fearing one of these units. And you can see I did a fair bit of damage there. Now the enemy unit is going to try to route through my unit. And that's going to do a significant amount of damage to them. I'm going to charge these two units with my Myrmidons. Do a fair bit of damage. Then I'm going to be fairing one of the units. Get it out of combat. 
Terminal Formation Attack. So we won. We're winning quite handsomely there. Now I have taken substantial friendly fire from my ally, unfortunately. I'm going to fare this unit. Then I'm going to charge in. Flanking charge. So as you can see, we're winning quite handsomely center now. Charging in. Attacking this operator, turning off formation attack. And in terms of points here, my Myrmidons are getting me quite a few points. <laughs> it's, it's not great by any means, but it's at least it's decent. So the Myrmidons are... my general might die at any point now, so keeping the general in a melee unit might be very risky. I'm going to be able to get another charge here. Shock a few units, heavy infantry, good for charging other infantry units. And now this is friendly fire total war time because people are so... People are... In, in these low tier matches, people are not careful with their friendly fire. Like, they will friendly fire the crap out of you. I thought I saw some artillery up here, so I'm going to try to get it. Now, you will notice that I am faster than most other heavy infantry units on the field, because I dropped shields. So that's very nice. It means I'm able to, route, uh, to run down routing enemies with ease. It means that it's easier for me to, to get into engagements, like here. Still should have a hard time catching up to these guys, but I might be able to, uh, to flank around. I'm going to get a nice rear charge here. Should be enough to break them. Get a nice rear charge here. I'll just be a bit careful with my general here. And now you'll see the Myrmidons drop very rapidly. Due to the uh, due to the skirmish fire, but we won over here. So now it's just pushing time. I'm very happy that my Miltiades general isn't dead yet. So now I'm going to use my speed to. I'm going to use my speed to uh, take off the defensive formation. And then I'm going to fare this unit straight through my allies. Well, it's it's go it's probably going to be dead anyway. It would be nice to get that artillery up there, but. Won't be able to. Just chase away these skirmishers here in the center. Or scratch that, I'm going to go and take out this artillery. Killing artillery gets you a lot of points. You should see my points increase quite rapidly if I manage to kill that artillery. So, infantry charge. Get the artillery pieces. Now, I didn't get all of the artillery, which is annoying, but I should be able to get this unit if I just move out of the defensive position, like so. There, my point should start increasing rapidly. Now I can use my superior speed to chase down these units over here, so they won't be able to fire at me too much. Friendly fire, dying to friendly fire, just total war arena things. And look at this charge here. Getting into these units. And now I can fare that unit. So it's going to try to route through my unit here. And I can now kill it quite easily. So just judging by the amount of men we have left here, we have twice the amount of men left. So we should be able to do this easily. I'll get another charge here. So notice that I've kept my Myrmidons in the open at all times. Because their speed in the open is much... Uh, it, it's With the drop shields, their speed in the open is much better than what it is in... What it is if I was uh, fighting in the forest. And I need my speed to get in. I need my speed to avoid skirmishes like this. At this point, I'm going to be losing... I'm going to be losing quite a few men, but I don't really care. Because we have this. 
Maybe not waste my general's unit. Get him back there. But use this Myrmidon unit to... Kill as many enemies as possible. And they're also killing their own units through friendly fire now, which is nice. So now I'll move up here and try to take care of these skirmishers up top. And keep these units in capping range. So I can start capping the enemy base. It's much more fun killing the enemy than just capping, but... Now, a neat trick here would be to fear him off the ledge. Actually, I'm going to try to do just that. I'm going to try to rush up here, because this guy is going to be able to kill a lot of our men. Skirmishers never run out of ammunition. And if that guy is able to stand there and fire for an extended period, he could do... he could decap us for quite some time. Now, we are leading heavily on points. I'm going to infantry charge to move up faster. Then I'm going to fare this unit. So when I fare it, it's going to start running. And of course when it's running, it won't be able to fire. It's going to try to route through my unit. And then I'm going to be able to kill a lot of these javelin men. They won't be able to cap. They will be down from their superior position. And now it's up to my allies to kill these units really. I could actually charge in, uh, but my now my allies, th they are in, they're not going to be routing anymore because they are in their base. So I'll just get the last charge against these guys. I am probably going to die to friendly fire, but it doesn't really matter at this point. Got 6,000 points, which is, which is a fairly good game with only melee units, but of course against, um, he's going to try to move up on the ledge again, the cheeky bastard. But yeah, it's a, with only melee units, 6,000 points is a fairly good result. And of course, I am playing with a higher, I am playing with a higher tier commander on lower tiers. So keep that in mind. It would be really hard to to get 6,000 points with Myrmidons. But uh, I think this was a reasonably, reasonably good representation of what the Myrmidons can do on the, on an open map on low tiers. They took out a lot of enemy units with the fear and the increased speed. Getting charges, blobbing up several enemy units, very important. And if you look at the enemy team here, they don't have a single player with more than... Uh, with more than 3,000 points. And I got 6,002 in that battle, so... A decent victory there for Miltiades and the Myrmidons. Now, another way to use the Myrmidons is I use them very offensively here with the drop shields ability. But you can, of course, also use the Myrmidons more defensively with uh, with Leonidas. 5,600 damage by the Myrmidons. Uh, didn't do too much friendly fire either. You see the artillery players did nothing in this battle, which is quite often the case, unless it's high tier artillery. So hopefully you enjoyed watching the Myrmidons in action. I quite liked playing with them here, although I have to say I could have done... I could have done a similar job with just the standard tier 2 hoplites. Strength and armor.